Hi, I'm Dr. Langley. I work at Pine Ridge Family Medicine, and I've done a previous presentation on how to keep your ears clean, uh, but I had some patients who wanted to know how it actually happened. So on camera today, very exciting, I'm going to have one of our MAs cleaning out my ears. So I usually recommend putting a, a chucks pad over your shoulder, especially if you're wearing work clothes so that you don't get wet unnecessarily. And then you get to hold this cool little cup that'll catch the ear liquid right under your ear. And I usually kind of spray the outside of the ear first so that you can kind of get used to the temperature. Yeah. And you can get used to the noise because it's not particularly comfortable. And it feels loud and tickly. And uh, yeah, it kind of gives me goosebumps. And right now I'm having my ear clean. Here, I'll try to tilt that. Look at the action shot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're flushing. The, the medical name for earwax is cerumen. Uh, so this is technically a cerumen irrigation. Irrigation, did you guys catch the joke up there? Uh, and the only reason to have this done is mostly if it, your ears are symptomatic. So if you're having an ear fullness sensation or itchy sensation, um, if you're having difficulty hearing, those would all be reasons to uh, see if your ears need to be cleaned out. Um, but you have to be careful. I mean, there's a tympanic membrane on the inside of your ear that can rupture. It's a delicate thing, and it hurts a whole lot if it ruptures. So that's one of the worries with having this done. Uh, you can also scrape the inside of your eardrum. Your, your ear skin on the inside of your skull there, lining your canal, is about one cell thickness uh, in depth. So that's really easy to scratch and do a lot of damage. Um, you can possibly push the earwax even deeper in your ear and make it worse. And it can hurt. I mean, a lot of patients are having this done, and they kind of get dizzy. Um, they say it's too uncomfortable. It hurts too much. And that's all a reason to stop. So let's see how my ear uh, liquid is doing here. Did I get anything exciting? I don't think I have any earwax issues going on, and I didn't get anything exciting out. Thank you so much. Um, and now I'm going to be dripping ear water out of my ear for the rest of the day, and that's normal, and it's okay. Sometimes you get really interesting chunks in that water that you're collecting, and that's kind of the, the most fun part for us as we're doing the ear wash. It's a little bit like being on a water ride. You're, you're getting water a little bit splashed everywhere no matter what we do. Um, so that's what it looks like to having your ear clean. Some people find it less comfortable than other people. I didn't mind it too much. There's other options for cleaning out your ears too. Uh, ceruminolytics, which means a cerumen or earwax breaker upper. Uh, just things even just like warm water in the shower that can remove earwax. Uh, saline or mineral oil can sometimes uh, do the trick for getting extra uh, earwax out. Hydrogen peroxide is one of my very favorites. I feel like the bubbles really help to free any loose pieces of earwax that needs to come up. Um, liquid colase, the same kind of colase that you take as a pill for a stool softener. You can squeeze the stuff out of the pack, out of the, the capsules or get liquid colase. That can sometimes break it up. Um, uh, and my the one that's been proven to be the best. It's called carbamide peroxide. I haven't been able to find it anywhere, um, so I usually rely on those other things for cleaning out ears on a regular basis. So those would be safe to do at home. A couple drops of mineral oil kind of mixes in with your earwax, especially if you have very sticky earwax. Um, it can help it to slide out more easily uh, because earwax, after all, is a very good thing to have. It's antibacterial. It helps trap things and get them out your ears are typically self-cleaning. The earwax kind of gently comes out on its own, and then you clean it off in the shower with a washcloth, something like that. Um, but some people just have naturally sticky earwax, so getting a little bit of help getting it out can be helpful. Um, so this was that. Those are ceruminolytics. This was technically irrigation. Irrigation, right? I already mentioned that. <laughs> um, and that's typically done in a doctor's office. You can get a little kit at home. I've seen those new ads for the smart ear cleaners where you can actually look in your own ear on your smartphone. I'm not sure if that's going to catch on because ears aren't that exciting to look at. Um, but there's also manual removal, so physically taking something and scraping out the earwax. I recommend going to an ENT or at least a family doc for that sort of thing. Uh, people sticking Q-tips bobby pins, toothpicks, all sorts of weird things in your ear can easily cause damage to your ear. Like I was mentioning before, uh, there's a lot of skin in there that's very delicate and can hurt a lot. You could put a hole in your tympanic membrane and have decreased hearing and, and the risk of infection um, inside your ear where things are not supposed to get into. I'm not a big fan of any of those. No Q-tips, uh, nothing in your ear. 
that's not at the doctor's office, basically. Nothing in your ear smaller than your elbow is how the expression I've heard goes. Um, I'm not a big fan of candling. Uh, I don't think it works very well. I'd rather see you in the office for the ear clean out. So hopefully that answered some questions about how you clean, we clean out ears here in the office. Um, I've got some more ear-related stuff up there if you're interested. And please uh, hit subscribe so you can find out when we release more content. Thanks.